Welcome to the live stream of the General Conference of the Wesleyan Church 2016. I'm Heath Mulliken. My co-host this morning is Tony Casey, and we are so excited to be joined by Kyle Ray, the pastor of Kentwood Community Church in Kentwood, Michigan, and David Drury, who is an author and chief of staff uh, for the Wesleyan Church. Uh, gentlemen, yesterday you had the Transforming Presence Seminar, and we're here to talk about your book. So this is the Wesleyan Book Club. Tony? <laughs> yeah, so um, David, I want to start with you. Uh, at the outset of this book, you acknowledge that uh, there are times while we're trying to live like Jesus, it's kind of hard to identify with Jesus. And so you just do this creative thing where you get uh, basically 10 biographies, 10 people whose lives are transformed by Jesus in John's gospel. Um, and you say what we can do is we can identify with their human experience. So fill in whatever else you want to say about that, but then also at some point here, dive into, just g give an example of one of these lives, what they experienced from uh, Jesus' transforming ministry in their life, and then the, a truth that you extrapolate from that. Yeah, what, you said it very well. In fact, you should maybe write some books there. Don't <laughs> hey. the, the, the there's kind of two ways to read the Gospels. One, you can read it and focus on Jesus and say, how can I relate to him? And sometimes that is hard to relate to. He's God, yeah. which is a good thing that people think he's God. That's good Christology. But what the problem is, is it's sometimes hard to relate to. And so the idea of actually putting yourself in the sandals of the people uh, that encounter Jesus and to say, hey, they felt the way I sometimes feel and how might I get in the presence of Jesus yeah. so that my life might be transformed? So you asked for an example of that. One of those that uh, means a lot to me is the story of Andrew at the feeding of the 5,000. Here he is, he's got a huge crowd and they need to feed him. Jesus is like, you know, what are we going to do? And all he's got that little lunch from that boy. And it says in the scripture that he looked out on the crowd and he said to Jesus, here's this lunch, but how far will this go? among so many. And I think we all have those moments that feel kind of like yeah. an among so many. I don't know if you work with human trafficking or, or planting a church or work with children or you work with the homeless. It just feels like there's so many people that have needs. How do I meet those needs? And in a way, by relating to Andrew, then you can relate to the reality that what right. you have to do is not multiply it yourself. You have to just give your lunch to Jesus. He's the one that multiplies it. Yeah, it's a good tie-in with the sense of being overwhelmed at times. Uh, Heath, I know you want to throw it to Kyle. R real quick before you do that, uh, I talked about human experience. Um, let me just read the title chapters here. Um, and again, just think of just our own lives and how we experience these things. Exhausted, unsatisfied, trapped, powerless, stuck, overwhelmed, afraid, guilty, marginalized, grieved. All of these things. I mean, human experience, all of us have been there, experienced these, these things. So, yeah, I would just really recommend the book. Yeah, the great thing about this book and so many other great books from Wesleyan Publishing House is it is designed as a resource uh, for churches. Um, Kyle, I know your, your, church, your church has used this book as a sermon series, as for small groups. Um, how, how was that used at Kentwood Community Church? Yeah, so early on in the process, David approached me about this book that he was working on, and it was very nice to talk to him about, as he looked at people that could relate to these qualities of the folks that he would be describing, um, I wanted to make sure that he was looking at it from not just a suburban context or not just a homogeneous church context, right. but that people in a variety of churches and walks of life would be able to connect with this book. And so um, I was able to help with that process early on in the writing of the book. And what we did at Kentwood was we actually created video-based small group resources wow. to go along with each chapter. So we did a little nice. five to eight minute vignette for each of the chapters. And then the way we walked through it was we did a five week sermon series. We dealt with one of the chapters in the sermon, but small groups got together and they dealt with two chapters in each of their group settings. So we had a high engagement of our church involved in groups, uh, people that had not been involved in community, they got involved in community, wow. people that were reading the book together, it got us all on the same page. Um, so it, it was great to, to be able to do that. And then to offer that video uh, resource to the denomination as a companion to the book, that's how the publishing house is packaging that now. So hopefully others can use it as well. And, and how was that... Um 
I know as a pastor, I love doing sermon series, but how is it for you when you're preparing a sermon kind of based on somebody else's stuff, how do you kind of make it your own? I tell you, it's a whole lot easier when the book drives you back to Scripture. Mm. So the fact that uh, David's book was nice. from the Gospel of John, it, it didn't feel like a book where I was trying to really grab somebody else's stuff. It right. felt like I was able to preach authentically from the book of John. Uh, Transforming Presence was a great way to bring the book of John into modern language. Mm. And then the video resources, this was a diverse group of real Casey Sears, not actors. And, um, yeah, so it, it worked out great. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let me, I, David, I talked to you before the pre-show, so uh, when I go through books, I just grab little kernels. There's a quote in here I love. It's on page 73, and it's, uh, you know, the chapter is dealing with uh, the healing of the royal official's son. You say this, each of these people whose lives had once seemed firmly under control ended up begging. All become beggars eventually. You may be a king or a queen a lawyer or a doctor, a mom or a dad, a pastor or a hairstylist, no matter who you are, the time of begging comes. And I love that quote because it seems to me um, that it kind of captures a the theme that runs throughout this book. And, and, and it's just, you know, Christian themes of, of surrender and Jesus is Lord. Maybe respond to that. I mean, am, am I close there? <laughs> yeah, in, in a way the way Transforming Presence works, you're trying to get it in the hands of almost anybody. So it's written in such a way that it's not trying to say this is higher level stuff, but quite quickly it gets you to that deeper reality. I think too often we think that uh, people far from God can't access yeah. Scripture, but then we also think that we have to wait a real long time to pay people deeper, when in reality, People can go deep pretty fast, and the deep stuff's actually the emotional stuff. So I agree with you that surrender is a big part of that theme. Uh, the, the reality is if people can feel like they relate to these people in Scripture, it really accesses those emotions. So, for instance, on the chapter you mentioned, Kyle did a great interview with the I, – I should say interview. It's really just a small group setting. It kind of models what a small group or Sunday school class can be like. And in that, a man shared about how his son was in the neonatal intensive care uh. unit just like mine in the story, and much like the royal official. And as it says in there, you know, there are times when you're in charge, but you're not in control. Right, yeah. And you got to give that surrender over to God. And this man shared about his son actually died, and he talked about begging, like it, you just read, and how he begged God, he did the begging thing, and eventually he found strength uh, in really trusting God through that. So yeah. that's a powerful example yeah. in the videos that Kyle did from his church of a guy named Tom. Tim. Tim. Tim did an amazing job just sharing from his heart. And then hopefully people start to do that out in churches uh, to share from their own experience. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Kyle, what was the response yesterday? I know you guys did a live seminar. Uh, what was that like kind of bringing it to a live audience? Well, first of all, it was a great turnout, so I really appreciated the folks that took the time to come out sure. to the seminar. You never know when you do it, you know, in a setting right. like this, who is actually going to come. So it was great. David and I bounced off of one another well. We got to show people an actual clip from one of the small group video resources. We had them model a small group conversation nice. about a particular chapter. Then we showed them a montage of video clips from the whole study so they could get a glimpse of what it's like. Um, David was able to share his heart behind writing the book. But I guess one of the special moments for me was the crowd that was there was receptive to me challenging them on something. I said, this resource has a diverse group of people in it, this video resource. There are people with accents that are not American. There's a gentleman from Chile, a gentleman from Zimbabwe. Um, it's hard for me to find small group resources with people uh, that point. have skin tones darker than me. right? right. Yeah. And so it's, it's diverse, and they're real people. And um, wow. I said, you know, a lot of times people are asking, uh, what if I'm in a homogeneous community and I'm not in a multi-ethnic community? What am I supposed to do about this multi-ethnic journey that the denomination is on? I say, well, you can be intentional yeah. about bringing in a resource that has people talking about holiness that don't necessarily look like Great. the people in your context. And the people seem to receive that challenge of intentionality very well. Amen. Yeah, very good. Now, we know people can go to WPHstore.com and WPHresources.com. Uh, to buy the book and buy the video. Is there another website people can go to 
to connect with the Transforming Presence resources, or is the, are those the main ones? Those are the main ones. I write at daviddrury.com, and you could go to Kentwood Community Church yeah. uh, as well online. Yeah. But those yeah. are the main places to go. The main thing is, I, I you know, we want to see people preach through John. Yeah, uh, right. Love to see people buy books, but in the end, it's like, let's get into Scripture together and, wa- and, and engage these characters. Yeah, I would say if you go to KentwoodCommunityChurch.com, you can certainly see the sermons that I preached. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, you know, I haven't provided any sermon manuscripts or anything, right. but I, we did it as a five-week series. A church could do it as a ten-week series as well. Yeah. yeah, and that's a great resource for a pastor to, I mean, Kyle, if you've never heard Kyle preach, Oh, my goodness. Uh, and so that's just a great resource for pastors to kind of see how they could do that. Well, we want to thank Kyle and David, not just for joining us here today, but for all you do in yep. the church and the denomination and for this great resource. Tony, show that to everybody. So make sure they're buying the right thing there when they are. go to WPHstore.com. Uh, so thanks to Kyle and David and for Tony and the rest of the team. I'm Heath Mulliken, and we'll be back in just a few minutes live with our morning pre-show.